Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Tech Shift F9 podcast. The podcast where we talk about career progression, transformation, all in the age of technology. I'm your host, Maurizio. And today we're going to have a bit of a special episode. We will not be talking about career changes and transformations and professional development and all that. But we'll be talking about a movie. And uh, I have an expert with me. I'm Maurizio, the host. Um, And the movie is a movie about crypto called Bitcoin that was um, put on Netflix, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And the expert I have today is uh, Lars Coe, who was on the podcast uh, a few weeks ago, well, several weeks ago. He's a uh, digital assets expert, uh, works for one of the largest uh, financial institutions here in Japan, and is a great friend. And I'm really happy about having him on uh, this week's uh, episode. Hi, Lars. Welcome back. Oh, thanks, Mauricio. It's an honor to join again. I can see you've been busy releasing lots of shows. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. But uh, I remember fondly the conversation we had. Uh, I think it was episode three. And uh, great to do a follow up and a bit of a funny one because uh, we will not be talking about jobs so much, but uh, about uh, a movie that I think touches a little bit uh, your career uh, and tangentially also my career, at least my interests. Um, so I'll, I'll just give a brief synopsis of uh, the movie. The movie is called Bitcoin is uh, on available on Netflix and it tells the story of the rise and fall of a company called Centratech and its founders. Now the founders were charged with essentially orchestrating a fraudulent initial coin offering, which is a way of raising money uh, for digital assets companies and crypto companies that raised more than $32 million from thousands of investors and basically they ended up uh, in big trouble with the authorities and netflix made i think they call it a docudrama which is a documentary but it's a little bit dramatized and um i enjoyed watching it but the first question for you lars is uh did you find it entertaining was it uh, a good watch yeah it's an entertaining watch for sure right uh unfortunately some of it is uh might actually this story is actually based on a real story true story um, so that's that's uh, makes it even more interesting, and some of the things uh, it's probably also related to what what if what happened at FTX. They they were this this uh, these guys went really far. Like they even had a fake CEO, uh, fake partnerships, and and uh, um, yeah, they were they went full in, they went full in, right? <laughs> yeah, they didn't even try, right? It was like we no. I'm not even gonna bother with it. We will be. Putting up, as you said, fake names on a website, created fake LinkedIn profiles, uh, created fake videos of uh, you know offices where they had you know random people just hired to you know stand around. But going back a little bit to uh, the movie element, the Netflix element of this, do you think that uh, Netflix did a good job in portraying what was happening uh, back in 2017 and 2018 with the? initial coin offerings and that ICO craze? Yeah, I think maybe that there has been a lot of uh, those things going on uh, at that time. Um, lots of uh, lots of uh, dubious projects. So yeah, unfortunately, that, that kind of portrays, I guess, what happened at that time. And uh, so, as from that, obviously, the, we have learned. And then uh, more regulation has come come in to kind of try to fix some of the issues. It's a new, right. it was a new industry at that time. And then it was a quick way for a startup company to raise funds, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, but what's interesting is the people that started this uh, Centratech, they weren't really startuppers or tech guys. They were real dodgy shady people right yeah unfortunately yeah and, you and know, you, like as an investor in these kind of things you should be able to figure it out right There's exactly and do due diligence you know um but unfortunately some of this stuff is sold to retail investors which are probably sometimes less sophisticated mm-hmm. so um maybe they should be protected a little bit more than the institutional investors who supposed to know at least right i mean it goes wrong in social finance that's too that's not in crypto right 
Right, right. And but what's surprising to me is the story of uh, Centrotech is pure fraud. I mean, FTX, massive fraud last year. Um, but there was a business behind it. It wasn't a very good business, but they were trying to do some business. These other guys at Centrotech back in 2017, they didn't even try and they didn't even care. And I wonder, yeah. even as a retail investor, wouldn't you be able to pick up some of that stuff? Or do you think it was too new, too fast for people to get their heads around? Well, there's definitely a lot of formal going in and fear of missing out, right? Um, for investors and 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 uh, maybe it looks good on paper first, and 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 there was a lot of product that came out. It's hard to follow all of them, which which are good and which are not. Um, but then of course you you would probably see some red flags, right? Uh, and then uh, and then get the hell out of there, right? As soon as you see something, uh, doesn't make sense, right? Because basically what they were doing was like a like a pump and dump scheme, you know, just exiting, exiting on the, on the later investors, right? And they even went so far as to cover up the whole thing uh, when uh, when people found out. So they they went really far. Yeah. They, they, they went deep down the rabbit hole, right? They did. So, what one thing they did was uh, celebrity endorsements. Can you tell us a little bit what they did uh, with that and what you thought about it? Yeah. So basically, you have celebrities. You can pay them with in either some of those tokens you have or in some other form to come and say nice things about your product. But celebrities are not necessarily experts either, right? So um, having them endorse a product is well, probably not, it's a blessing in disguise, right? Like, I mean, just because they're famous or it's a marketing stunt, right? It doesn't mean it's a, it's a proper product, right? I know I think now these some of these celebrities are also facing some issues um from the from the ftx specifically where, right. they, where they where they burnt their fingers some of them like, like took a, a big chunk of money for basically promoting something which they shouldn't maybe yeah. they think it was good at that time right but obviously obviously in hindsight is it, they re would realize that it's not a good thing right they promote yeah and it. i think uh in ftx case you had tom brady and his wife that probably put some money in ftx too and became sort of spokespeople and I think they lost money as well because, uh, you know, the extent of that fraud was even bigger than uh, these uh, Centrotech guys. But what's interesting is the philosophy of sports personalities, movie personalities, endorsements of companies and products still hasn't changed. So in this case, in Centrotech's case, they had Floyd Merriweather, the uh, boxer, and then I think they had DJ Khalid, who's a musician, that obviously know nothing about anything, right? Other than boxing yep. and uh, DJing. So they even said in the movie that the boxer was maybe not that smart or bright. So they thought he was an easy <laughs> target, right? <laughs> it's terrible, right? Like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I bet they wouldn't want to talk to him in person now because they get a beat. No, here. exactly. You wouldn't want to make him <laughs> like Ali now, right? <laughs> totally not. No, the, the business idea behind Centrotech was actually something that is now being done by several companies, which is provide a, a bridge between crypto asset ownership and the ability to spend uh, money through uh, perhaps a credit card in retail stores. And there have been some offerings with companies, the big credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, all work on uh, these projects with different companies in different jurisdictions, obviously. Uh, so it, to my mind, when I was watching the, the documentary, I thought, well, I'm the, there's a kernel of actually a good business idea, but they had absolutely no ability to be able to pull it off. Isn't that a bit ironic? Yeah, but that's pretty bad. They even they used fake partnerships with Visa, and right. uh, and then that would also be pretty easy to check, really, right? Uh, so the this New York uh, Times journalist uh, found out a lot of things and basically. And also one of the investors uh, collected evidence to the court right. case. So, uh, but back to the the debit card they had with the visa, right? That that's, um, I mean, you have all this money invested in a virtual world, but how can you actually spend it in the real world? That's the that's the offering thing, right? You, you there should be some 
uh, way to spend your money in in um, in the real world. You so you can uh, because not everybody can take um, can take cryptocurrencies yet. So so you still need to go back to fiat, right? And obviously yeah. there's uh, that that's that that's a that's a good case for um for off ramping your cryptocurrencies, right? Which you yeah. have, have you invest in some product like hopefully a better one than this one <laughs> and it could give you a nice return <laughs> and then you could take some money out and, and spend it for your living or whatever right there's nothing wrong with that yeah the underlying idea of making crypto easy for people to use and to own is is a winning idea it's a little bit like the uh, hot news of the day these days which is the bitcoin etfs right being approved uh, and the, the, technically the spot bitcoin etf because we already have ETFs on uh, Bitcoin futures. And the whole point is, yeah, they make it easy for people. They want to have that exposure. Same idea with Centratech. I have a Visa debit card. I can charge it with my ETH or with, with Bitcoin. I can spend it at the supermarket. Fabulous. Uh, not quite in the execution. Uh, now, it, it, going back to, to the movie or the documentary, uh, did you find... Uh, any part that was overly dramatized and perhaps Netflix made it look a little bit inaccurate compared to what the industry was like at that time? Or do you think they were pretty honest in the way they portrayed the industry? I mean, lot, uh, unfortunately, I think they were pretty accurate with, with <laughs> some parts of it. Uh, but there, there's there's other things like Ethereum you just mentioned. That, that has been a massively successful product and then uh, uh it doesn't look like it's a fraud like this right <laughs> so um there's there's a big spectrum right like in any financial industry there's there's good and bad actors right of course so of course. When, when these were the extreme version of, of uh, what can go wrong right yeah and i agree i think uh netflix uh didn't uh like overemphasize aspects of what was happening back in 2017 uh, for this documentary. I think they were fairly accurate, I agree. Uh, I would have thought they could have put a bit more emphasis on what was happening around regulation at that time or what was not happening around regulation. Because, you know, the two scammers that uh, the co-founders admitted, said, look, there's no regulation in this, so we took advantage of it. Mm. Misunderstanding the fraud... <laughs> It's not allowed in any context, right? It's, it's like, come on, guys. Right? I mean, it has nothing to do with crypto. It's not that because it's crypto, you can do fraudulent business and it's okay. Uh, but it would have been interesting, I think, if Netflix spent a little bit of time maybe talking to the regulators and how they interpreted what was happening back in the day. Because today, we sort of know in the U.S., how the SEC is thinking, how the Department uh, of Justice is thinking. Uh, here in Japan, the uh, Japan uh, Financial Service Agency has very clear rules on uh, on crypto. But at that time, nobody really knew what was going on, right? I, I felt that was part of the documentary that I think they should have put more, more focus on. Do, do you have any personal thought on things that you thought they should have done better or more or different? Yeah, they kind of just skimmed on the surface of it, really. They just said, like, this guy was uh, Ray. I think the main actor was a criminal. And then when the when they caught on to him and the Pete come down on him, he basically flipped and mm -hmm. uh, basically threw all, everyone else under the bus, right? It was just not really <laughs> fair, right? <laughs> he, because he basically, like, that sits a little bit bad in my mouth after watching this movie that he can just get uh, no, no, no um, jail time at all. Uh, but I guess it's a movie, so it's good entertaining. It's a good entertainment, right? Um, and then the regulation has definitely uh, learned more uh, because it was a, a new industry, new um, innovation that came out um, on the back of the financial crisis in in um, in two thousand seven and eight. Um, so it's it's getting clear now because the problem is also crypto is global. It's a global thing, and regulation is um, is localized in, in an area or a country, right? Uh, tied to one currency or or, or something like that. So that that's a, so that obviously like the, the regulators are. Um, I'm, I was working a lot with them last year. Um, basically, the way they can 
uh, improve is to work together globally to come up with some rules and then they are doing that now and um, so that that's all good stuff because you basically need before there was no clarity it was basically wild west uh, and then you would have all these bad actors, right? So basically destroy the name of the the reputation of the whole industry. So it's it's definitely gonna be better from now on. Um, like regulation is good to have there for sure. So you you can, uh, uh, but maybe you you will get less uh, as the as the ETFs come out and become more mainstream. Uh, that is actually against the original ethos of Bitcoin. Like, yes. you should not have any. The cyberpunks they didn't want governments to be involved in this. Uh, like, in um, have too much power. They they want big corporations to stay away, and the individual person should just invest in what he wants and they be left alone. So, so now, but now they're bringing in uh, big institutions in in form of ETF. So. They're kind of giving up a little bit on the original, uh, what should I say, hopes and what what they wanted to do. Yeah, the because there was actually it the big. It was a lot of big 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 banks were messed up in two thousand seven and eight, right? Oh, and, totally. And then I can understand why some people are upset. Like maybe not um, everybody was kind of called to justice on all the bad things that happened at that time. So right, and the taxpayers then foot the bill on that one. So that's not really fair, right? Absolutely. And the other point uh, that actually you just brought up, uh, talking about why Bitcoin was launched back in uh, 20, uh, 2009, uh, is that Bitcoin's got nothing to do with this uh, documentary. And yet no. they called it Bitcoin. Except, except from the name of the movie, right? Yeah. yeah. Like Bitcoin, and, I, right? <laughs> and I thought that's a little bit uh, clickbaity by, by Netflix. I think, so if I were to ask you, if you were to give it a more accurate name, how would you call this uh, documentary? Um, basically, like it's a roller coaster right through the the cryptocurrency underworld. Really, <laughs> maybe that title I is like too long. That. No, I like that. <laughs> a roller coaster ride through the underworld of the crypto market, or so. Uh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like so, that's basically what it is, right? So here is another question. Uh, if you were hired by Netflix to do a follow-up to this documentary about the world of crypto, not necessarily to this story, but in general to the world of crypto, what would the title be and what would the story be like? Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, maybe something we can kind of focus on uh, like where the regulation is uh, helping and not helping. Uh, that's that's obviously, but it has to be entertaining as well. So right. I guess it could be some guy who invested in uh, in in some startup product and it actually worked out for him. And also how digitalization is going to revolutionize the, world, the world and make it a better place, hopefully. Um, and you can easily pay uh, pay anybody in the world. Like it's... Uh, it's as it's easy as uh, phoning someone. Uh, so the, the, some movie like this would kind of show it in a, in a better light, I guess. Right? Right. right. Positive light. You know, I would do not a documentary. I would do a fiction uh, movie, a fictional movie about Satoshi Nakamoto. And I would come up with a wacky backstory because obviously nobody really knows about Satoshi, right? And so he can write whatever you want, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and perhaps uh, have him become, uh, the, you know, the new ruler of the world. I don't know, and uh, or have him fight against Elon Musk because <laughs> apparently Elon Musk wants to fight everybody. Um, actually, on that point, do you think? Uh, a documentary on Elon Musk's approach to crypto would be interesting because he's had a sort of hot and cold relationship with crypto, hasn't he? I mean, he had his company hold Bitcoin, the treasury uh, of Tesla. Uh, he's been sometimes very positive about it, then very negative. I mean, I know we're going off tangent here, but if I were to tell you Elon Musk in crypto, what, what would you think about? Well, he's one of the richest people in the world, so and he's very much into innovation. So a lot of people are listening to him, and then think he he's uh, he's an idol, right? Because he basically took a lot of risks, 
against all odds and succeeded. Um, yeah, he's the, I think he's the CEO of uh, Dogecoin, which is a meme coin, which basically <laughs> has no financial meaning whatsoever. So, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it'd be nice if he endorsed it, right, and, and said positive things about it. That would definitely help. But he also has to be a little bit careful because he the regulation will if you go if he says he's going to end up the same problem with these uh, right the, the liberties right if he, he's a kind of he's a liberty too but so he's going to have to he has to be a little bit careful what he says yeah yeah exactly so unfortunately we're not going to get uh, a Satoshi Nakamoto versus uh, Elon Musk uh, fight uh, over a movie some sort of a superhero movie type style but uh maybe maybe they will i don't know netflix if you hear this that's our idea so don't go steal it but um, could but could be could be like satoshi versus uh gary gensler from uh sec right he seems to be <laughs> extremely popular in the crypto community these days <laughs> yeah and, uh, that, that'd be, that'd be the good and even the good and bad person right? depending on what side you're on <laughs> yes the darth vader of uh of the crypto market uh that's right it's the sec uh last question for you lars um what grade would you give this uh this documentary and would you recommend it to uh, your friends i think i'll give it like four out of five i mean it's pretty accurate and uh, entertaining um, maybe at times it, it gets a little bit deep uh, and, uh, with, the, with the crypto stuff, but they, they try to keep it entertaining. So that's pretty good, even for people who haven't are not really into crypto. Uh, and um, they show the lavish life, lifestyle uh, where they basically deceive investors. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's a, it's a good movie. It's a good it's good laugh, right? Don't take it too yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I would give it four out of five too. Uh, exactly as you said, it's entertaining. It gives a good review. At times, it slows down a little bit, but it's not too long. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, well done to Netflix. All right, well, Lars, thank you so much for uh, this review. I know it was an unusual conversation, but I really enjoyed it. And um, thank you, everyone, for listening. And um, we'll speak soon. Thank you, Michelle.